Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today in front of me I've got one of these Skitari Rangers, servants of the Machine God, the foot soldiers of the Cult Mechanicus. These guys have the somewhat unenviable position of being responsible for guarding Forge Worlds, accompanying Titan Legions into battle, the Night Worlds for example, and also going out into the galaxy with explorative fleets, looking for those fabled pieces of lost technology from the earliest days of the Imperium. They are... Pretty cool. <laughs> now the techniques I'm going to show you in this one are just as applicable across the uh, Skitari Vanguard too. All you would need to do would obviously be swap out the, uh, the heads and you're going to paint the guns a little differently. But other than that, exactly the same way. So let's get a look at the paints we're going to use and how to get started on the Skitari. Now the first and clearest difference between this and painting most other models you'll see so far is I've not put them on his base. <laughs> now the Skitari tend to have a really cool sort of two-toned effect with their jackets. Mars in particular, they're red on the outside and then they've got sort of a beigey inner cloak, which can be quite difficult to paint if you've got them on his base. So now for comparison, there is, you know, one who's actually on his base and you can see getting to that area at the back there is actually going to be kind of difficult. Now, luckily, it's not difficult to get these guys off their bases. If you've already glued them down, don't worry too much. And honestly, with a bit of careful brushwork, you'll find you'll be able to get in there anyway. I just like to do it like this because it is that whole bunch easier. I've just dabbed a little bit of super glue on his foot and glued him to a screw. You know, it's nice and simple. And it makes sure I can spray him really easily, get to all the undersides and what have you. So you might find that's an easier way of doing things. Whatever the case, let's get a look at the colors we're going to use. So we've got here both Balthazar Gold and Retributor Armor. Now you might choose to use just one of these, but I like a little bit of variety on the gold and brass on these guys. They tend not to have a true gold on them, but the two colors that we're going to use, once we've washed over the top of them, they're going to give us a pretty cool effect. They'll look slightly different to one another, which is bonus. We're then going to do the outside of his jacket in Mephiston Red, no great surprise, and Xandri Dust for the inside. Rhinox Hide is what we're going to use for his gun, so we're going to paint the wooden with that. And Dryad Bark is what we're going to do for any leather details. Once these two have had a wash, they'll actually look fairly different to one another, so that's a bonus, especially when it comes to highlighting them. We'll do a few little details in Avalanche Sunset, so just a couple of exposed cables, something to get a little bit of visual interest on the model. And then we'll paint in any black details, so his trousers. Now, as always, you can use Abaddon Black, but I do recommend pick yourself up a pot of the old Vallejo Black, just for that coverage. Once we've finished all of our base coats, on we go to our good friend, Agrax Earthshade. So, let's get started. Now, in a surprise move, we're actually going to start with Rhinox Hide, and we're going to start off by painting his gun. This is because there being a little bit of brassy sort of detail around it, like near the sort of power pack, all this filigree stuff near the base, if we do the gold first, we might end up going over those areas, and uh, you know, had to fix them up. So by painting the brown first, anything that goes over these areas we want to be brass, we can touch that up later when we actually get to the brassy stuff. So take your time. You may find you need a couple of thin coats of this. And like I said, it'll probably seem like a strange place to begin. But whatever the case, all of the wood on his rifle, fill it in here with your Rhinox hide. Now once that base coat's down on the gun, we're going to go for the inside of his jacket. And here is where, you know, not gluing him down becomes the much, <laughs> the much easier way of doing things. As well, if I'm looking to get under, you know, certain parts of the model, I can just change how I'm holding him. And I can get in there with my brush without my fingers in the way either. So I'm going to finish off. I know this is the, <laughs> the strangest thing to see while I'm holding him upside down and all. Just watch out for any of the metal areas that you'd want to leave metallic as you're going around doing this. So let's carefully get in there. And this will probably take a couple of thin coats. Now that with the inside done, we can do the outside of his cloak. Get a bit of my fist on red and around we go. Now the one part to look out for on these models in particular is up near the arms. Some of them will have, you know, metallic forearms. So obviously you don't want to paint that bit. Just take your time, try and avoid any of the metal bits that you haven't painted yet. You want to be fairly tidy with this. Whatever the case now, all you got to do is get around all these red parts. With those main couple of colors done, you know, <laughs> he almost looks finished. 
Um, I've gone back and I've tidied up the bottom of his cape with a little bit more Zandri dust. But some of these areas, like for example on this little Dealy Bopper here, you might see I hit them with a little Mephiston red. But spoiler warning, we can tidy that up. I've got here my Balthazar gold and I'm going to go and do just a few random panels um, and do those in brass. These guys from the Mars Forge world, they tend to have like a, a brassy trim along this chest piece here, and you might see it's quite uh, quite well defined. If I can just get a bit of... There we go. Uh, so you'll probably want to swap on down to a small layer brush for that one, but otherwise what I'm going to do is just pick some spots and make them brass. So anywhere that I think is going to look good, just to break up some of that silver. Now as well, what I'm going to do after that is go straight to Retributor Armor, and I'm going to fill in the gold details on his gun. So I'm not going to do both of those on camera, just have a quick look anywhere that you want to be this nice brassy colour. And with those two colours applied, you can see how much it adds to the model, just breaking up some of that silver and giving us a little more to look at. As well, the difference in tone between the gun and his armour looks pretty cool, I think. Now as a quick note on the subject of his gun, while you're putting the gold on, there is a very good chance, <laughs> if you're anything like me, that you're going to splurge over some of the areas that you painted with the wood earlier. In which case, just bust out your Rhinox hide again and touch them up. It's not too difficult. So next up comes his pack, and we're going to go ahead and use our Dryad Bark for this. Now this is quite a big sort of backpack thing he's got all of these beeps and boops plugged into. So you want to make sure you're getting all the straps and what have you. I recommend do check out the box, you know, or have a look on the website to see sort of how far this leather stuff goes. But whatever you're going to do about it, just get in there now. And it will probably take a couple of thin coats of dried bark to fill that in. Now with that leather done, we're going to get in and blacken his trousers. Now I've just got my, as I said, Vallejo black. And you don't need to be terribly careful with this. Um, if it does go over any of the metal bits, don't worry too much, because we are going to do a little bit of a clean-up stage after this. But again, having them on the screw makes these areas much easier to reach. All you really want to be careful of is try not to hit that Xandri dust you've already done. Now at the same time as doing the trousers, I've also blacked in a couple of cables around the model, just to make them, you know, a little bit tidier. And I've also gone and painted in the symbol on his chest. Now remember, the left-hand side of the skull is black, where the right hand is going to be white later on. And then the cog behind it mirrors that. So I've got here my Avalanche Sunset, and we're just going to pick a couple of little pipes, just to add a little bit of color around and brighten them up some. So this is going to be different on each model. And again, you can pick you know as much of this as you'd like. If you don't want to do some of these areas in yellow, I'd recommend just paint them black in the previous step. Then we're just going to hunt out any areas that we might have gone over, which we want to be lead belcher. Sorry, again, always it happens. I'm concentrating, I'm whispering. <laughs> so go around, and what you want to look for is anywhere that you might have... Uh-oh. I hit the Zandri dust. Uh-oh. We'll fix that in a second, too. <laughs> but anywhere that you've uh, gone over the metal, just touch it in now with a little bit of lead belcher. And any other areas, <laughs> at the same time you might have messed up. You can, you can fix those up now. Now this will change from model to model, but if you have any purity seals, just a little bit of screamer pink for the wax, and then Ushapti bone just to cover over the, uh, the paper and make it look a little different to the Zandri dust we've got underneath. Alright, now after all of that, we've finally got to the stage where he's ready for his wash. Now these Skitari, they can be quite intimidating because there's a lot going on. But, you know, try not to let it worry you. All you gotta do is go through step by step and you will reach this stage. So I've got my big old brush here. If you've got a medium shade brush or something of the like, just load it up with your Agrax Earth Shade and we're gonna wash this whole model. Now you might want instead to do a slightly more sort of tidy look, in which case, paint out. Start first with non-oil and do in all of the sort of central part of the model. So as his armor, his gun, and what have you. Then, once that's dried, you can go and put Agrax Earthshade over all the red details. 
Personally, I think it looks just as good if you do the whole thing in Agrax Earth Shade. So, funnily enough, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to finish that off now, then we'll give them about half an hour to dry. Now after a good half hour, here's what we've got. And as always, you can see what a big difference that shade makes. It might have gone a little bit glossy in some places, just because of virtue of how much of it we put on, but it's nothing really to worry about. When we go ahead and we're going to drop the satin varnish over the top of that, that will all disappear and we don't have to do anything about it. So first things first, what I'm going to do is highlight back up the inside of his cape. And we're not going to do very much to this, to be honest. I've just got my Xandri dust again. And I'm just going to go towards the outside of the cape. There might be a little bit much water on there, actually. So I'll let that dry. <laughs> and we'll try another spot. So let's get in here. And I want to leave the very recesses, so the deeper parts of the cape, without mucking around with this but just to brighten up the color a little bit, let's go back to some Xandri dust. Now, once you've smoothed out the underside of his cape, you can do the same thing with the red. But honestly, I prefer a little more contrast on my red for these guys' capes. So I'm actually not going to go back over with Mephist on red. Instead, I'm going to go straight to Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to do some highlights. So what I want to pick out is... Well, on the top of his hood's a good spot to show this off. So where this edge is, where it's over the top of this weird head on the inside, just a little bit of red to make that stand out some. Along the front, oop, I'm not even doing that on the camera, oopsie daisy. So along the front of his cowl there too, and then we'll get that neat faked out red effect. So what I'm going to do now is do that to a few other spots on his cape. So we'll get out a bit closer here and we'll do... Just a little bit along the sharper folds. And you see, once that dries, it'll be a little bit, uh, a little bit less extreme, and it'll help really shape that cloak. So I'm going to finish that off now. Now, before I forget, let's get into this symbol on his chest with a little bit of white scar. So just filling in the areas that we left silver before. Now, when it comes to highlighting the metal, normally I'd go to Stormhost Silver, but today instead I'm going to use Ironbreaker. It's not quite as bright, and I like my guys to have a little bit of that sort of lived-in look to them. So you might find when you're putting this on, it's not quite as sharp as Stormhost Silver would be, but it's still brighter than just leaving that metal as it is. So just cruise around now, and you can either fill in areas or just do a sharp line at the edge, However you think it's going to look best. And get your iron breaker onto these areas now. Now if you want to brighten them up, a little bit of Liberator Gold on your small layer brush will do wonders on these brass areas. Then you can even use a little Liberator Gold on these uh, gold areas too. I would advise try not to use too much of it though, because you don't want the gold and the brass to look too similar by the time you've finished. But just for picking out extreme edges, this is a pretty good choice. Now, still with our small layer brush, grab yourself a little bit of scrag brown, and we're just going to do some of these edges on the leather. This will look quite orange going on, but as it dries, it will darken down and look a lot more reasonable. So, cruise around, and as much of this as you want to put on, really. On that purity seal, just a little bit of Screaming Skull and some Pink Horror will help set that off and make it stand out from the inside of the jacket. Try not to paint the whole thing in, but you really want to make those edges really stand out. And now we'll just finish in his lenses with a little bit of Fenrisian Grey. Be careful with this one, but if you do end up going over any of the lens or so the socket itself, you can touch it up with a little bit more silver and fix it. So take your time anywhere that you want to look like a sort of glassy lens. Just wiggle on a little bit of Fenrisian Grey. Okay? Now I've gone ahead and done his lens, the little thing on his backpack there, and I've done a couple of the little blinky lights on his pack too, blue, because I think it just adds a little bit of nice contrast to all of that gold and red on his back. But what happens if things go awry? And we've gone and put a little too much of the old uh, Fenrisian Grey into his eye socket there. 
It's not too hard to fix. All you need is a little bit of gum and blue. Get yourself your fine detail brush or whatever you've got and just dab it into there. Now I'm going to rinse off my brush quickly because I've put way too much in there and make sure I'm not going to drip any more water into it. And I can just slurp away some of it. There we go. Now as that dries, what that's going to leave us with is this Gilliman Blue will collect around the ring itself, like towards the edges of that socket, and darken it down. And that'll look quite cool. Now with all of those details dried, I've then gone and given a blast of Munitor and Varnish Spray. And like I said, that's given a slight all-over sheen, which really helps disguise some of the worst effects <laughs> that that Agrax Earthshade might have given us, but also helps to find the edges a little more and makes that red a little bit richer. The other reason why I've done that is that this bit is about to get violent. You know, I want to handle him quite roughly, and I'm going to just snap him, basically, off... Oh, that was anticlimactic. <laughs> I thought that was going to make more of a mess. Now we're just going to get a little dab of super glue under his foot there. Just enough so that it'll stick. Get him mostly center over the base and push him down. Now the base obviously I've gone and painted earlier, so that's nothing too much to worry about. And after a couple of seconds, there he is, stuck on there. Now I could probably have put him a little bit further forward, but I like my guys to look as though the majority of the action is happening over the middle of the base. So that's why he's uh, a bit further back there. But with that done, that is our Skitari complete. All I gotta do is black around the edge of the base and he's ready to hit the table, varnish and all. So the real sort of trick with this one is trying to get him before he's glued down to his base so you can reach all of the detail under that cape. Otherwise, it's all fairly standard techniques and just a bit of, uh, how to say, target priority. <laughs> Think about what order you want to put these colors on and it'll be much easier. So as ever guys, just to finish off, I'm going to black around his base, grab a couple of photos. As ever, you can get in touch, drop a comment down there in the old YouTube box, or both my Facebook and Twitter are linked there too. As well, this is one of the videos made possible with the assistance of my lovely patrons, also linked down there. If you want to help out, it is very much appreciated. So thank you very much for your time, guys. You enjoy the rest of your day.